Hey, 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 everybody, it's Mr. Pedersen here, and today we're doing a review of topic 12, in particularly 12-3, Understanding the Whole. And in this lesson, we're going to use what we learned about fractions and unit fractions in 12-1 and 12-2 to determine and draw whole shapes, given only part of the shape. And you, the students, are going to apply your understandings of the parts of a whole, as you learned about that one whole can be different sizes and a fraction of the whole must be interpreted relative to the whole to which it relates. So in this lesson, we're really going to emphasize our conceptual understanding and procedural skills of what we know about fractions. So I thought this guided practice, like we do similar to in class, in person, was a great example. We've seen some problems like this before, but I'm going to use it to get you warmed up to do these problems on your own. So this example says the part of a race Bob has completed is shown at the right. And you can use fractional parts like this to identify the whole. So this is what we have so far, two thirds. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line so I know, and that's what they did right here. Two thirds is two copies of one third. Divide Rob's track into two equal parts. They did that for us, awesome, just like we did up here. And three copies of one third make three thirds, or one whole. Draw one more third. One equals three thirds. One whole equals three thirds. Whenever we're representing one whole, the numerator and the denominator is the same. And we'll see that here shortly in another example. So let's take a look at number one here. If the distance on your ran was one fifth of the length of the track, what fraction would you use to represent the whole track? So we only know that she ran one-fifth. They want to know what's the whole track, what's the fraction of the whole track. So we go straight to our denominator here. We see that it's a five as the denominator. So they, we know that there's five equal parts of one-fifth, giving us five over five for the whole track. Awesome. And what is true about the numerator and the denominator of each fraction that represents one whole? Well, we just did it here. It's the same. So the numerator and the denominator, when we're representing one whole, is always the same, just like here. So I'm going to skip this one and go down to a couple other examples that I think will help us make more sense of this. So. You're going to draw a picture and write a fraction to represent the whole. Well, I'm going to do it, and you're going to follow along with me. So they gave us two-thirds here. Now, what do we need to create the whole? Let me get my handy-dandy writing implement here. Oops. Bear with me here. Okay. So we're going to finish this shape to give us one whole, and then we're going to write the fraction. So this only gives us two thirds. So this is obviously one third, another third. Now we need to add one more third to give us our whole, right? So we have one third, one third, one third equals, you guessed it, three thirds. Or, you know what? One whole, right? good old one. Leave it like that. Next one. They give us one half here. What do we need to complete the whole? Well, you're probably thinking, we need another half. And you're absolutely right. So we have another half here. I'm going to write it over top of it to help us out so we can see what we're doing. Now we have 2 over 2, better known as, you guessed it, one whole. Let's take a look at these last two, and then I'm going to let you go on your own. So we have three-fourths here. So I'm assuming I'm going to go ahead and break this up so that we have it into three parts. So we have one-fourth here, another fourth here, and our third fourth. So one-fourth, one-fourth, one-fourth. They want us to make the whole. We're going to have to add another one of these guys in there giving us, just so we know, we have one-fourth, 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 
and that's going to be 4 over 4 or 1 whole. Awesome. Now this one's a little bit longer. They give us 2 sixths here, but it's only one th shape. How is it going to represent 2 sixths? Well, we got to split it up. Now we have 1 sixth here, 1 sixth here. So we have our 2 sixths. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw the rest of them. So if we have 2 sixths already, how many do we need left to complete our whole? Well, 6 minus 2 is 4, right? So we need 4 more blocks. So here's two more. Now we have one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. So this is four sixths. We need two more to create our hole. Now let's count them. One sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. We have six equal parts of one sixth to create six over six or one whole. Alrighty. So we know that when we have, we look at our denominator to see how many equal parts there are, and that's going to really help us out with figuring out what our whole is. We looked at all the denominators here to see how many more we needed to add to complete. Let's go over them really quick. They gave us two thirds. We needed to add one more third to get three thirds. They gave us one half with the denominator two. We know we add another half to get two over two or one whole. Three fourths. We know we needed one more fourth to get our total four over four or one whole. And last but not least, they gave us two over six with a denominator of six. So we needed to add four more equal parts to two to get to six over six or one whole. Hey, you're going to do great. Keep watching these videos. They're going to help you out a lot in the rest of the slideshow. And keep rocking. Good job.